Hey, how you doing? All right, well, good evening. And welcome to the celebration for the inauguration of two recently reelected uh, commissioners and two and one newly elected commissioner. That's right. Exactly right. This is a very exciting time uh, in Henry County because I think uh, if you'll think back to all the boards we have had, uh, this board will represent. Uh, a more accurate cross-section of our community and of who we are, and that's very exciting for all of us. Uh, I hope tonight and that the coming four years will represent a message of hope in Henry County. Uh, there is a person, in my opinion, who I think does the best job of representing hope in professional politics. It is a man by the name of Tim Scott. He is the United States Senator in South Carolina. Tim is a Republican African-American senator uh, who was born and raised in Charleston uh, to a mother who worked 18 hours cleaning out other people's bedpans at the local hospital. Uh, father was long gone, so as you can imagine, he spent uh, most of his time with his grandparents. His grandfather was the sole, sole male influence in his life. 
And Senator Scott tells this wonderful story about how he vividly remembers every day of his childhood coming down the stairs and seeing his grandfather at the kitchen table reading the Charleston Post every morning. Whether it was a school day or the weekend, every morning his grandfather was reading the Charleston Post. Senator Scott goes on to say that years later he realized that his grandfather would even finish his breakfast sometimes and make sure that little Timmy saw him reading the Charleston Post. He would wait for him, sometimes for hours. That is a very unremarkable story until you know this. Uh, Senator Scott's grandfather could not read. He died a few years ago at the age of 94. He still could not read. But he wanted little Timmy to have hope. He wanted to broadcast a message of hope. What will our message of hope be in the coming four years? For those of us who have seen this board change time and time again, isn't it exciting to watch this community reinvent itself every single day? time. And here we are, once again, on a Tuesday in McDonough, Georgia, watching it begin again. I think it's very fitting at this time that we have the invocation. I'm going to ask Pastor Reverend Lee if he would pinch hit for us tonight. Uh, on your program is, is Reverend William Flippin, uh, but we've got everybody's pastor, Reverend Lee, here to pinch hit for Good evening. Could we just stand for a moment? And uh, if you are, if you're not afraid, you know, maybe want to touch somebody's hand. All right, all righty. Let us bow our heads together. God, our Father, we thank you once again for this very beautiful day. We thank you for the glory of this moment on this evening, as we gather in this inauguration of of our commissioners for another term. We just want to thank you for them and thank you for all the citizens who have uh, taken the time to come out and to share in this great moment of celebration. And I want to declare everybody in the house tonight a chief of celebration. In all of our lives, we have a lot of small wins and every now and then we have some big wins. But for our commissioners tonight, it represents a moment of a big win in their lives. And we just want to allow everybody in here tonight to share in their accomplishment and to also to be a part of their work, their vision as we go forward to make Henry County even a greater place than it is on this night. So wherever we go and how far we go, we just want you to know the night, Lord, that we ask that you continue to guide, you continue to lead, that you continue to touch, that as we move forward, that we can become even stronger in cooperation, in unity, and in growing this county in a way that it will become a blessing for each and every one of us. This is our prayer on this night, and we ask it all in the name of Jesus the Christ. Let every heart say amen. You all would remain standing, please, for the presentation of colors by the Henry County Police Department Honor Guard and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance given by Miss Helen Busbin and remain standing until the Honor Guard recedes. Thank you. States 
of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. We now move into the part that all of you came for. <clears throat> we are first going to swear in our two current commissioners that were reelected, uh, Gary Barham and Bruce Holmes. I can tell you from my friendship with both of these men that they are great examples of good government. I did not know either of them very well before taking office years ago, um, but they both always look for a reason to say yes. If at all possible, uh, they try to partner with you to get things done in this county. I'm proud for both of them, and I hope you are as well. I would like to now uh, call on my good friend and colleague, Judge Kelly Powell of the Probate Court, to administer the oaths. Commissioner Barra? If you would come up and anybody that you want to invite to come up with you. Nice looking crowd. All right, we have two oaths that I'm going to administer to you um, this evening. So if you will raise your right hand, and if you want to put your left hand on your Bible there. Do you, Gary Barham, solemnly swear or affirm that you will well and truly discharge the duties of commissioner for Henry County and in all matters which require your official action to the best of your knowledge and skill Will you so act as in your judgment that will be the most conducive to the welfare and the best interest of the entire county? And do you solemnly swear you've been a resident for the time required by the Constitution and the laws of this state? Do you further solemnly swear or affirm that should not the holder of any unaccounted for public money do this state or any political subdivision or authority thereof that you're not the the holder of any office of trust under the government of the United States, any other state or any foreign state, which you are prohibited from holding by the laws of the state of Georgia, and that you're otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution of the United States and the laws of Georgia, and that you will support the Constitution of the United States and of this state. Do you so help you God? Yes, I do. All right, and one more. Do you, Gary Barham, being a citizen of Henry County and being an employee of Henry County and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee, do you hereby solemnly swear and affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Georgia? Do you so help you God? Yes, I do. All right, congratulations.
you very much. It is official. And now, Mr. Holmes. Y'all are just getting to be all hats at this. <laughs> I'd like to invite all friends and family. Sandra Scott. All friends and family. Renee. I was going to say, don't make him start calling names. <laughs> if you're in District 5, come on up here. right hand and put your left hand on the Bible. What a crowd. Uh, do you, Bruce B. Holmes, solemnly swear or affirm that you will well and truly discharge the duties of commissioner for Henry County and in all matters which require your official action to the best of your knowledge and skill that you will so act as in the judgment that will be most conducive to the welfare and the best interest of the entire county? And do you solemnly swear or affirm that you've been a resident of the county for the time required by the Constitution and the laws of the state? Do you further solemnly swear or affirm that you're not the holder of any unaccounted for public money due this state or any political subdivision or authority thereof and there, that you are not the holder of any office of trust under the government of the United States, any other state or any foreign state which you are prohibited from holding by the laws of the state of Georgia, and that you are otherwise qualified to hold this office according to the Constitution of the United States and the laws of Georgia, and that you will support the constitutions of the United States and of this state. Do you so help you, God? I do. And do you, Bruce B. Holmes, a citizen of Henry County, and being an employee of Henry County and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee, do you hereby solemnly swear and affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Georgia? Do you so help you God? I do. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. you are official. Yeah. Yeah. At this time, I'd like to introduce Jaden Williams, who is Miss Thomas's grandson, and he will introduce Dr. Lee. Good evening. I am Jaden Williams. Like they say, I'm Vivian Thomas's grandson. I'll be introducing Reverend Dr. Edward L. W. Lee. For over 42 years, Reverend W. Edward Lee has witnessed astonishing growth as pastor of the Shallow Baptist Church, and that is nothing short of a miracle. With, God, with God's guidance in 2006, Shiloh successfully transitioned into a, a new 30,000 square foot edifice with a seating of 11,000. A big jump, I'm sorry, 100,000. <laughs> 
a big jump from the 350 seat legendary church of former days. For Shiloh, this feat was no small task, but was made possible with a, sm a simple vision, growing, grow the people, reach our destiny, operate in our gifts, and win our community. Invitation to discipleship, new ideas, and our embrace, and gener generosity is valued. Reverend Lee was licensed to preach in March 1963 by Shiloh's former pastor, the late Reverend R.H. Milner. As Pastor Reverend Lee knew that in order of, for Shiloh to grow in every way and reach the destiny that God wanted for the church, he and his flock needed to use their God-given sp spiritual and natural gifts to win the community. During Shiloh's 147th church anniversary, the Family Life Center was named the Reverend Dr. E. W. and Betty A. Lee Family Life Center. Reverend Lee is best, blessed to be able to devote his life full-time to ministry. There was a time when he worked a full-time job while con concurrently serving as the pastor of Shiloh. He was the executive director at the Campbellton YMCA before retiring. After 33 years of service, he was also blessed to have a room named there in his honor. Reverend Lee serves as a chaplain for the Henry County Police Department. He serves as the chairman of the Henry County United Way Advisory Board, president of the Henry County Ministerial Alliance, past board chair as director of the New Era State Congress of Christian Education, and was a member of the board of directors for Henry County's residential housing. As a result of his service in McDonough and Shiloh's long standing as a beacon in the community, former Mayor Richard Craig of McDonough declared Sunday, April 3rd, 2005, as Reverend Edward W. Lee Day. On March 21st, 2014, he was awarded the Carrie May Hambrick Community Service Award by Henry County's NAACP. He has also been featured in the We Are Henry magazine, the Southern Journal, the Common On Ground News. In addition, Reverend Lee was named Chaplain of the Year for 2016 by the Henry County Police Department. Please stand on your feet and help me welcome thy words of wisdom from Reverend, w from Reverend Dr. Edward W. Lee. Thank you, uh, Jaden, and uh, trusting that protocol is, is uh, already in order, but to all of the officials of, of this great county and in relationship to all of the citizens who are uh, a part of this great county, to the three commissioners who are being inaugurated tonight, um, I'm just glad to have had the opportunity to come by and just say a word or two. I usually preach for about 45 minutes on Sunday, but I'm, I'm gonna let you all off the hook on tonight. Say amen. amen. Thank you very much, Commissioner Thomas, for allowing me to come out tonight and to share with you, and uh, always glad to be in your presence. There is a uh, very familiar story found in um, uh, the, Holy, the Holy Word. Uh, I believe it's around St. Luke, the first chapter, uh, where we have a story of a, of, a, of a priest named Zachariah and his wife, Elizabeth. And they are up in age but they've always had a desire to have a child. Always had a desire to have a child. So in that, in that first chapter, we find out that Zechariah was chosen to do one of the things in the temple that he had always dreamed of doing as a priest. And that year, he was chosen by Lot to serve incense in, in the temple. So we find out that while in the temple, uh, the presence of the Lord shows up in the form of Gabriel the angel. And it informs uh, Zechariah that he and Elizabeth will have a child and that they would name him John, and that he would go in front of the Messiah 
sort of calling the fathers back to the children, the children back to the fathers, and getting ready a people to embrace Jesus Christ as Messiah. Well, of course, Zechariah is in the midst of accomplishing one of the greatest dreams that he'd ever had, and that was serving incense in the temple. But yet, as he listened to Gabriel in the presence of the Lord, he sort of began to question himself and saying, how is it that Elizabeth and I can have a baby at, at such an old age, and, and how, how is this going to be? And after discussing it a little bit with Gabriel, Gabriel said, because you don't believe, he said, you will not be able to speak until this blessing comes to pass. This blessing comes to pass. And I always sort of think about that particular moment that Zachariah and Elizabeth were super excited about having a son because they had always wanted to have a child. But what threw Zechariah was the additional task that John would have, John the Baptist would have in sort of bringing fathers and children together and children and fathers together and making a people ready to embrace Jesus as the Messiah. So what I want to say is that maybe Zechariah and Elizabeth was a little bit selfish because all they wanted was a son and they were super excited about having a child in their old age. But God had some additional task for this child that they didn't quite understand. And the commissioners tonight, and especially Commissioner Thomas, you have, you have achieved a goal that you probably always wanted to achieve. You have become a commissioner of, of the 4th District in Henry County. Let's give her a hand clap for that. And that's that's a lot to be a proud of. I, 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 know, I know that her, her, her chest is sticking out and she's enjoying this night and looking forward to a great moment in office. But there is a, 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 a scripture in, in Romans 8, 28 that says, and we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. According to his purpose. So what was happening here in the life of, of Zachariah and Elizabeth, it was a good thing that they were having a baby in their old age. But there was a greater good that they were dealing with with John because then he was going to, what, prepare the way for the Messiah. It was good that they were having a son in their old age, but it was a greater good that this son would prepare the way for the Messiah in the hearts of the people. So the word of wisdom tonight to Commissioner Thomas and to all the other commissioners is that in your role as you go forward, we thank God for you. We thank God for your sacrifice. We thank God for all that it took to get you to where you are. You are where you are, but you are not here just for yourself. Uh, you're, not, you're not here just to improve your own life. You, you are here because there are some other people in your district that is depending on you. Oh, I wish I had a witness. 
And I guess, I guess one, 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 way, one way I can look at this is that, is that on the news, you know, every day I'm, I'm faced with this news stuff. We all got this, what, news thing going on. And, and we have a president right now that, that seems to feel that everything that he does is for himself. But we have to remind him every now and then that he's not the president just for himself. That he's the president for this nation and every citizen in the nation. So I want to say to the commissioners tonight that like Zachariah, like Elizabeth, we are excited about your accomplishment. We are excited about what you're doing. But there is a greater good, and that greater good in the text was that John became part of the plan for God's redemption of mankind. And, and, and all of us who find ourselves in political office, we are not just there for ourselves. We are there for the communities that we represent, for the families that we represent, and that's the greater good that God has put us in a place not only to lift ourselves, but to lift all of those who are around us. So that's my wisdom tonight, is that we thank God for what he does for each and every one of us. But he doesn't do it just so that the individual might achieve, but he does it because those that the individual represent also might achieve and also may be led to higher heights in all that is to be done in their own lives through this community. So I just want to say thank you for an opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you for an opportunity to sort of drop maybe a word of wisdom. And all of us have to remember that we are responsible for each other. And whatever God blesses us, he doesn't just bless it Bless us for us, but he bless us that we might bless others. So thank you tonight, commissioners. Go high, go strong, and do all the good that you can do. In the name of Jesus, let every heart say amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Lee. At this time, I would call upon my work wife and colleague, the newest Superior Court Judge, Holly Bill. Good evening. I have the pleasure, and I suppose the displeasure as well, following Reverend Lee. Thank you all for coming out this evening to, this, to witness this momentous occasion. Uh, my name is Holly Veal, and I was appointed and sworn in November 7th by Governor Nathan Deal is our first African-American and female Superior Court judge in this county. So I was humbled and honored when Vivian called me and asked me to, to tell you guys a little bit about her this evening and also to administer um, her oath because she is also going to be the first African-American woman to lead District 4 as our commissioner. And that also deserves. <laughs> Vivian is a native of Hawkinsville, Georgia. She's been a resident of Henry County for the past 20 years. She's never been a stranger to hard work, service to others, and the pursuit of excellence. As the oldest of eight children, her solid upbringing is a reflection of loving parents, Mr. and Mrs. Elmer Thomas, and Ms. Thomas is with us on the front row. Her parents instilled the values of faith, honesty, and integrity. Do the right thing. Treat others the way you want to be treated were not merely cliches in the Thomas household. They were the standards and the guiding principles that the family lived by. 
Vivian studied business at Georgia State University. She went on to establish several successful businesses and became a trusted and resourceful advocate for many community and civic organizations. Her business, her business endeavors flourished into multi-million dollar enterprises and her commitment to the community has initiated constant productivity. Both have earned her a stellar reputation as a trustworthy and exemplary leader. Commissioner Thomas's expansive service to the community includes her being a board member for M&M Hope House, where they work with the homeless and less fortunate by providing food and clothing bank. She is also a part of the Professional Services and Public Policies Committee for One Henry, and she has volunteered consistently with the Hank Stewart Foundation when it comes to Henry County for Career Day. She established phenomenal women soaring beyond, saluting successful community leaders and empowering evolving leaders. With community partner, she impacts the lives of teens with her For Her, For Him leadership and development programs. Additionally, she is the recipient of the Henry County NAACP, NAACP excuse me, prestigious President's Award. Ms. Thomas has also been named twice to one of the 100 women of influence in Georgia by the Atlanta Business League. And so I'll take a page from Chair Wood and I'll say that Henry County is in excellent hands. At this time, I'll ask Commissioner Thomas to step forward with any family and friends. Ms. Thomas, will you come up and join her as I administer the oath? this side too. Commissioner Thomas, will you raise your right hand? Do you, Vivian A. Thomas, swear or affirm that you will truly and discharge the duties of Commissioner for Henry County in all matters which require your official action to the best of your knowledge and skill, and you will so act as in your judgment will be most conducive to the welfare and best interests of the entire county? Do you also solemnly swear and affirm that you have been a resident thereof for the time required by the Constitution and the laws of this state? Do. do you further solemnly swear or affirm that you are not the holder of any unaccounted for public money due this state or any political subdivision or authority thereof, that you are not the holder of any office of trust under the government of the United States, any other state, or any foreign state which you are prohibited from holding by laws of the state of Georgia and that you are otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution of the United States and laws of Georgia and that you will support the constitutions of the United States and of this state. So help you God, say I do. I do. Keep your hands raised for the second oath, which is the loyalty oath. Do you, Vivian A. Thomas, being a citizen of Henry County and being an employee of Henry County and the recipient of public funds for services rendered as such employee do hereby solemnly swear and affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of Georgia. So help you God, say I do. I do. Congratulations.
Oh, she wants you to act like you're signing it again. You got it. I told you I'll be here. All right, at this time, I'm going to ask the 911 director, Mr. Don Ash, to come up and lead us in the benediction before the closing. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, God. Lord, to give your name, praise, honor, and glory. Lord, thank you for this foundation that has been established this night. And Lord, thank you for the great work this commission will do for this community, God, for these citizens that represent Henry County. Father God, be with them, Lord. Guide them, Lord God. Strengthen them for their journey, God. Lord, right now we also ask you to bless the food and the hands that prepared it, the food for the nourishment of our bodies and the bodies for your, our bodies for your service. Lord, please remember and continue to strengthen Officer Michael Smith of our police department, God. Be with his family, God, as they go through, God. Lord, we know that you're with them, God. Lord, as we leave this place, but never thy holy sight, give us traveling mercies and let us find our homes, a home of peace and a home of joy. We give you thanks and honor in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. In closing, um, before my life as a judge, I was a prosecutor in this community. Uh, I was a prosecutor for nearly uh, 15 years. And <clears throat> a couple of years after being sworn in as an assistant DA, I, I'll never forget, um, I met a lady who um, had been the victim of an attempted murder. Um, she was fleeing an abusive um, home life, and um, the night she decided to leave, uh, <clears throat> he finally ran over her with her own vehicle. Uh, it fractured five of her ribs. Um, one of the fractured ribs punctured the lung, deflating it. The back tire, from best they can guess, um, scraped the bottom of her face, from the bottom of her chin all the way up to above her eyebrow. Uh, she was hospitalized, and they induced a coma to um, allow her body to heal. <clears throat> After several months in the hospital, uh, she underwent the better part of a year in rehabilitation. Um, when I met this person, she was in the middle of rehab. The evidence was not as strong as uh, I would have liked it to have been. There was one witness to the crime. It was an elderly woman who had died of natural causes uh, between the time the crime occurred and the time that the district attorney was able to get the case indicted by the grand jury. Nevertheless, we went to trial. Uh, I wish I could tell you that the jury came back with a verdict of guilty. It would make the story much better. Um, but the verdict was, uh, was a hung jury, which means that the jurors could not decide. Some of them believed there was enough evidence to convict, and some of them believed there was simply not enough evidence to convict. Uh, I had warned her about this, and she knew. Uh, but I can tell you as a prosecutor, you're going to lose cases. And <clears throat> there are many days that you sort of get to wear the white hat, and there are a lot of good days. But there are also some pretty bad days as a prosecutor. And at the top of that list is whenever you feel like you've let a victim down. 
Uh, I remember gathering my things um, as the courtroom was evacuating and uh, walking out the big swinging wooden doors in the back of the courtroom. And I walked into the foyer area, and there was my victim. And uh, she approached me, and with a, a smile on her face, uh, she thanked me. Um, <clears throat> before I could respond, uh, she said something to me that I had never had a victim say to me. And I've never had a victim say it since. Never heard of a victim saying this. But she said, um, I want you to know that I intend on going out and making a lot of money. I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'm going to make a lot of money. And when I've made money, I'm going to donate some of that money back to police and prosecutor organizations. Um, those of you who know me know I can be awkward. Um, <clears throat> and so I was awkward. I sort of mumbled through a thank you and... She turned and walked away. I mean, what do you say in that moment? My brain had time to catch up to what she had just said, and so I stopped her. I said, hang on just a minute. I said, I, I have never had a victim say that to me. I've never heard of somebody saying that to a prosecutor, especially after we really just lost the case and it was a hung jury. I said, what was it that made you say that? She turned, she looked me in the eye, and without missing a beat... She said, sir, it's because this process, for the very first time in my life, taught me that I'm somebody. <laughs> I think we all want to feel like somebody. Uh, I think we all want that message of hope. Folks, we ought not have to meet a lady that is nearly dead, hospitalized for three or four months, rehabilitated for the better part of a year and now cherishes the time she has left to realize that what we have in common is far greater than what divides us. Commissioner Holmes, Commissioner Barham, and now Commissioner Thomas, my challenge to you over the coming four years is this. Spend as much of your time and as much of your heart and as much of your spirit as you possibly can, thinking about that message of hope. Remind us all, and frequently, that we can enjoy our differences. We can enjoy our uniqueness. But that at least in this community, in Henry County, our common humanity matters much, much more. On behalf of the staff, I want to thank you for attending. On behalf of the Board of Commissioners, as well as the county manager. I want to invite you all to a reception. It is in uh, B. It's in B when you walk out of here. Uh, it's sort of to the left. You're all very welcome to attend, and all of the commissioners will be there uh, to shake your hand and speak with you. Thank you for taking time out of your night to spend it with us. Good evening.